งามสงครามมันวานลูเบิดลงจูนพูนลายช้ำแมงกระเบิดเชียงระเบิดแล้วมันวูตึงนอนบ่เต็มตื่นเพราะว่ามันยิงอยู่ชั่วโมงย่านกูโหชันไปให้ตายอยู่ให้ก็มีจนถึงเมื่อนี้เลยก็ยังตายอยู่คนย้อนลูเบิดอันนี้เนี่ยมันยังพักพังอยู่ตามดินตามดอนเฮ็ดไห้เฮ็ดนากับยุ่งยากเพราะว่าย่านมันแตกใส่ประโยคมาแล้วมันแตกตายนั่นแหละไปกับลูเบิดแตกแล้วตายเทการชนอยด้วมันเฮ็ดไห้ประชาชนนี่ทุกเงียบปากมองเลยบางเธอก็เชี่ยวค่ะบางเธอก็ตายช้ำสิบเก้าปีก่อนประเทศนี้ถูกแพ้ในสงครามสงครามและในการรบที่เกิดขึ้นในเวียดนามคุณพ่อและแม่ของประเทศและประเทศอื่นๆทั้งหมดได้รับการช่วยเหลือในที่นี้ในผลลัพธ์ของสงครามและในความตายของคนมีคนหลายคนถูกฆ่าหรือถูกจับกุมจากบ้านในขณะที่ประเทศยูเอสไม่ยอมรับการช่วยเหลือในอเมริกาเป็นการรบที่มีความลับในเวียดนามDuring the Vietnam War, the U.S. bombed the Ho Chi Minh Trail, much of which lied in the neutral country of Laos. Despite a willingness to respect Laos neutrality, the United States eventually became engrossed in the country. I want to make it clear to the American people and to all the world that all we want in Laos is peace, not war. Beginning in 1964, the United States dropped more than two million tons of bombs in Laos. Making Laos per person the most heavily bombed country in history. Every eight minutes, 24 hours a day, for nine years, the United States Air Force dropped bombs on Laos, and by the end of the conflict, the U.S. had dropped more bombs on Laos than it did in all of World War II. Huge regions of the country were decimated, and over 50,000 Laotians were killed. The U.S. government repeatedly denied involvement in the country, and even five years into the raids, transparency remained foggy at best. There are no American combat forces in Laos. We have been uh, providing logistical support and some training for the neutralist government in order to avoid uh, Laos falling under communist domination. As far as American manpower in Laos is concerned, there are none there at the present time on a combat basis. Uh, we do have aerial reconnaissance. Uh, We do have perhaps some other activities. I won't discuss those other activities at this time. At the time, the American public was largely unaware of these bombing raids, and even now, many Americans are not fully aware of the damage done to the country. Of the 270 million cluster munitions dropped, more than 30% failed to detonate, leaving over 80 million unexploded bombs scattered across the region. Today, hundreds of Laotians die every year from the remaining explosives. As Laos infrastructure does not have the resources to clear them from their villages and farmlands, and because 80% of the people rely on agriculture, these unexploded bombs have severely handicapped Laos' economy. As much of the region must be cleared of explosives before agricultural expansion can resume. Remnants of war continue to shatter lives here in Laos. The country is littered with these metallic shells, and the United States bombing campaign has had such an impact on Laos culture that there is a market centered around war memorabilia and recycled shell casings. Many people use metal detectors to search for these shells and sell them as scrap metal. However, this practice is ill-advised as it leads to countless deaths as people encounter both active and inactive explosives. If not sold for scrap metal, these recycled casings can be used for flower pots, hanging lamps, or simply just for decoration. I traveled to Laos with the intention of learning more about our role in the conflict, but I could have never imagined the extent to which the bombing has and still affects Laos. It was heart-wrenching to see, and I couldn't help but feel responsible for the war crimes that my country committed just 40 some years ago. How did I not learn about this in school? Why did my government hide this from the public? The effects of the conflict were apparent in the countless number of amputees and bomb decorations present in the country. While in Laos, I visited the UXO or Unexploded Ordnance Museum in Luang Prabang. The museum provided excellent information about the circumstances that led to the bombing and the massive impact it's had on the country. Here, I learned that the carnage from UXOs continues to this day, with more than 20,000 Laosians being killed or maimed in the 40 years since the end of the Vietnam War. 
The museum displays the various explosives dropped on Laos and provides information on how Laos and foreign governments are working to rid the country of these unexploded bombs. A video featuring children who have been injured by UXOs runs in the back, serving to both educate and warn future generations of the dangers of UXOs. After visiting Laos, I wanted to find out what reparations the United States has made since the end of the conflict. I learned that in 2016, President Obama became the first American president to visit Laos. I was deeply impressed with Obama's knowledge of Laos and his willingness to learn about the country. He took responsibility for the U.S.'s actions in Laos and outlined the United States' historic plan to invest in Laos' future. In his speech, he acknowledged that, despite the increased funding, much more work must be done to resolve this issue. Given our history here, I believe that the United States has a moral obligation to help Laos heal. And that's why, as president, I've dramatically increased our funding to help remove these unexploded bombs. As a result, Laos is clearing more bombs, fewer Laotians are being hurt or killed, and together we are saving lives. But there is still much more work to do. So today I'm proud to announce a historic increase in these efforts. The United States will double our annual funding to $90 million over the next three years to help Laos expand its work. When we are able to come here and show respect for their culture, recognize uh, uh, our history, and then you know, point towards a future in which we can work together, we will actually have more influence. Uh, we'll be able to promote our ideals more effectively. Uh, and we'll also learn from uh, these countries. The country director for the Mines Advisory Group was quoted saying that before the president's announcement, he feared that UXO operations in Laos would take hundreds of years. Now he's optimistic that this can be reduced to decades. Despite this increase in foreign aid, it's important to know that the problem is still ongoing. The country director for NPA Laos cautioned that much of the country remains unsurveyed with limited data regarding the extent scope and nature of the problem. The result of my visit, I hope that more Americans come here as well to experience your country and the beautiful culture and to forge new friendships between our peoples. So this is the future our two countries can build together. And I'm optimistic that we can do it. If you would like to donate to one of the many aid agencies working to address the UXO problem in Laos, I recommend donating to Halo Trust, the Mines Advisory Group, Norwegian People's Aid, or COPE.